This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson. From the Astrodome, it's Cleveland against Houston. We now have a final on that Pittsburgh game. Steelers win it. So, in the Central Division, here's what it looks like. The winner today between Houston and Cleveland, sole possession of first place. The loser will be tied with Pittsburgh with an 8-5 record, one game out of first place. Oilers won the toss. Don Cockcroft will be kicking off. The deep backs, Carl Roach is number 85, Jeff Groth number 81. And a massive, massive traffic jam outside of the Astrodome. We'll have a sellout crowd. They're just not here yet. From the yard line, Jeff Groth. He fumbled. Cleveland dies for the football. And the Browns have it. So the opening break goes to the Cleveland Browns. Charlie, you can tell right away on a kickoff what the tempo of this game is going to be like. Because the special teams, when they're going all out, like you're going to see right now, it means that they are ready for this football game. As you can see the hit. The ball is tripped. The Cleveland Browns come up with it right away with a great play, great field position, and an opportunity to score. John Mooring recovered the fumble. That is the 38th turnover this year by the Oilers. And so Cleveland has the ball at the Houston 19-yard line. Brian Seif is the quarterback with the two Pruitt, Greg Pruitt and Mike Pruitt. And we want to welcome those of you that have been watching the Miami Pittsburgh game. Opening kickoff, fumble. Cleveland recovers at the Houston 19. And Seif goes right to work with a blitz on out of the backfield is Mike Pruitt. And he is out of bounds. Close to the 10-yard line, a gain of nine. It'll be second down and one as Ted Washington makes the tackle. There's the backfield. Brian Seip, number one quarterback in the National Football League. His receivers as a trio have a total of 100 now, 19 receptions, and they have 10 touchdowns. The reason they do so well is because this offensive line is protecting Seip. He's only been sacked 13 times so far this season. Cleo Miller replaces Greg Pruitt in the backfield. Second and one. Rucker comes in motion. Big first down inside. The five-yard line goes the momentum of the players, but the knee touch at the six, so it will be first down and goal to go at the six-yard line. Mike Pruitt carries. That defensive front three is going to have to put some pressure on Brian Seip. They're going to have to have some help from the linebacking corps. There you're taking a look at the linebackers. The last time on the passing situation, number 50, Daryl Hunt blitz. The secondary, and it's an outstanding one. Stemrick, number 27, is considered the best for the Houston Oilers. That secondary is 15 interceptions. They're most in the game. Three, and that was against Cincinnati. But the Browns trying to capitalize very quickly. He's and they do. Touchdown for Cleo Miller. And that is the first touchdown of the year for Cleo Miller. Charlie, you know Cleo and I used to play together with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I was asking him before the ball game when he was going to get to play. And he said he is ready. 43 is Mike Pruitt coming in, leading the way. This is sheer hard running by number 30, Cleophis Miller in for a touchdown. And right away, the Cleveland Browns are on the board. You may recall last week against Houston, they had a great deal of problems with the Jets. They got down at one time, 21 to nothing, and had to play catch-up football. And we're only one minute and two seconds into the ball game. A 19-yard drive in three plays. Cockcroft to attempt the point after. And it is good. So it is Cleveland 7 and Houston nothing. Now number 81 was the man who coughed up the football for Houston. And that is only the sixth touchdown this year that the Oilers have given up on the ground. We have 13 minutes and 58 seconds left to go in the first quarter. And Cleveland is out in front 7-0. It's taking a look at the two return men back there. Roach is talking to Gross saying, forget about that last play. That's history right now. We've got to start all over again. We're down seven points. And we can come back, and we can get a good return. So here we go again. Don Cockcroft for the Cleveland Browns kicking off to either number 85, Carl Roaches, or number 81, Jeff Gross, who fumbled the ball at the 19-yard line. It was recovered by John Mooring. 
And in three quick plays, the Browns went in to score. Cockroft does not kick the ball far, Charlie, but he will get height on it, giving that kicking team an opportunity to get out, get down under the kick, but it will be returned. Fielded at the 11-yard line by Roaches. And Roaches returns to the 23. He will have 12 yards. On the return, now let's go to New York City and Brian Gumbel. This game. Now the Oilers go to work with Tim Stabler, the quarterback. Earl Campbell and Tim Wilson, the two running backs. Play action. Tim Wilson has the reception. And is brought down at the 20. He will lose three. It'll be second down and 13 as Clinton Burrell, defensive right cornerback, makes the tackle. Now let's look at the offense for the Houston Oilers. In the backfield, and of course the man to watch, is number 34, Earl Campbell, leading rusher in the NFL. And the receivers, they will go, as you know, with a two tight end set. That means that Campbell can run either to the right or to the left with the same amount of blocking. And if they're going to have success, the big men up front are going to have to do the job. Leon Gray, number 74, the left tackle, is an all-pro. Rich Castor is in there, three tight ends in the ball game. The pitch is to Earl Campbell, remaining back. Campbell goes out of bounds just outside the 32-yard line. A pickup of 12 as Darden and Burrell were there for the Cleveland Browns. Well, that answered the question about Earl Campbell. How is he feeling this week? Number 74, Leon Gray, all-pro tackle. He's taking on Lyle Alzado, another all-pro in the National Football League, and that's going to be a great matchup this afternoon. The Oilers plagued by flags last week again on this play. Holding number 63 offense. Bob holding Young. penalty on Bob Young. That offensive line of the Oilers had five holding penalties last week and Morris Towns had four of them. And they have 24 this season. Their opponents only six. So bring it back to the 10. The down goes over. Second and 23. And another one, he is pushed out of bounds at the 12-yard line, a gain of two. So it will be third down and 21 as Clarence Scott was there for the defense. Taking that defense, they employ, Cleveland employs a 3-4 defense. Lyle Alzado, number 77, is the veteran on that team. The linebacking core, their job is going to be to stop Earl Campbell. And Stonewall Jackson is the new man in that lineup. He's doing an outstanding job this year. You're taking a look at the defensive backs of the Cleveland Browns. They're going to get in the picture only, I think, if Houston gets way behind. Stabler has to throw. Third and 21. Pass is dropped to the right flat by Tim Wilson. Stabler threw that one almost underhanded, Charlie. He was looking for a receiver downfield. He didn't want to take the loss, so he's just trying to dump it out to his outlet, man. But... You mentioned, too, about Stabler and his delivery. He's always been a, a sidearm or a three-quarters delivery man, but that time he almost threw it underhanded. Just trying to get rid of the football, avoiding additional losses. Cliff Parsley to kick a 41.4-yard average with Dino Hall set for the return. So the Browns, who lead 7-0, will have excellent field position if Hall has any kind of a return. And he is an exciting return man. Give him a little bit of room, and he'll go. The kick is short. They will leave it alone, so Hall does not have to return it. The ball is blown dead at the 48-yard line. A kick of only 36 yards with no return. Browns lead 7-0 Astrodome, Houston, Texas. Thank you, Brian. So the Rams are doing just as the Cleveland Browns are doing in this ball game. Sam Ratigliano, the head coach of Cleveland, he is in his third year. Opening fumble on the opening kickoff by Jeff Groh. John Mooring recovered it. The Browns went in in three plays from 19 yards out. They have a first down now in the Houston 47-yard line site to throw. Going deep to Logan, and he overthrows him. Dave Logan, the intended receiver, and J.C. Wilson had the coverage. 
And right away, Seif was going for six quick points, but it was excellent coverage by number 33, J.C. Wilson of Houston, trying to go up top to Logan, trying to get another quick score and put uh, Houston really in a deep hole. Now, you can look at the numbers of Brian Seif, but when you total them all up, it means that he is the number one quarterback this year in the National Football League. And during the month of November, 63% completion with nine touchdowns and four interceptions. Cleo Miller is in the backfield. He scored the touchdown. Mike Brewer. And he rambles for about nine yards on the play to the 38-yard line. It will be third down and one. Mike Reinfeldt, free safety with a tackle. You mentioned Cleo Miller coming into the ball game. He led the way blocking. 43, Mike Pruitt. It was the man who carried the ball, but it was a big block by number 30. You see him right there. You see him cheated up toward the line of scrimmage. That means he's getting up there in a hurry ahead of that ball carrier. He's flying up there. It makes an outstanding block on 54 Bingham. That opened the hole for Mike Pruitt. And prior to this game, Cleo Miller had only 45 yards rushing on the season and no reception. And this time, he is submarine by the middle guard, Ken Kennard. Ken Kennard, number 71, did an outstanding job of getting penetration and upending the back. I don't know whether he got the first down or not, but it was a great play by Kennard. You can see right here, there he is, flying through there. He makes the hit right now. He's got good penetration. It will be fourth down and one. And the Browns are going for it. Just over 11 and a half minutes left to go. We are in the first quarter. So Reticliano, the riverboat gambler, is at it again. Fourth and one. That's where they go to the left side. Well, they don't go at all. They're not going at all. Just trying to draw them offside, Charlie. Using the 30-second clock. They will take the five-yard penalty. It's a good move. Johnny Evans will be kicking. Had nothing to lose. Where the ball was situated around the 40-yard line, it doesn't make that much difference whether it's on the 40 or the 45-yard line. He's either going to try to hang the ball up high, talking about the punter Evans, or he's going to try to kick it out of bounds. Now remember that Johnny Evans is also the number three quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. In his career, he is in his third year, he's completed two of three passes from punt formation. Penalty being marked on. I think if they had wanted to throw the football, they would have done it with fourth number and one rather than fourth and six. Offense. The Oilers do not have a man deep. be thinking like you are. They're going to say, make sure he kicks it first. Houston not gambling on any kind of a return. As a little bit of pressure, the high, lazy float of the Oilers will just stay away from it. Good kick. Down at the seven-yard line with 10.58. Left to go, first quarter. That punt covered 38 yards. Cleveland is out in front, 7-0. Let's go to Anthony, spot the ball at the 8-yard line. So Houston trying to get something going on any kind of field position. And they, of course, start with Earl Campbell. 16-yard line, he picks up 8. It'll be second down and a couple as Clinton Burrell, defensive right cornerback, was there along with Robert L. Jackson, number 56, the left inside linebacker. First time that Houston had the ball, they tried a screen pass. Nothing worked on that particular series. Now they're going back to what they can do best, and that is give that football to 34, Earl Campbell. He had the blocking of the right guard, Ed Fisher, on the last play. Campbell dropped for a loss. Knifing in was Clinton Burrell. He has been everywhere number 49 for the Browns coming up from defensive cornerback he has no respect whatsoever for the pass on that play he really flew up there as a matter of fact on the on the first play of the game on the screen pass to Wilson he was up there penetrating the line of scrimmage something that a quarterback looks at he'll remember that 
Burrell was really flying up there to make the tackle. Sometime, maybe later in the ball game, you'll see maybe uh, Kenny Staber fake a run and try to get deep on Burrell. He's forced to throw now, though, Charlie. Lots of four, third and six. Three tight ends. Campbell. 22 yard line. First down. Only with an arrow of Campbell can you do that. You're looking at a third and six situation. You wouldn't think the pitch out there down in that territory, but they do. You're going to see the pitch out. Caster 88 is in the ball game. Campbell makes a good move to the inside, making sure he isn't run out of bounds to pick up the first down. It's the first first down for Houston, and it's a big one because they need to get something going. Clay Matthews and Robert L. Jackson there for the defense. We're moving on the nine-minute mark. Time remaining. We're in the first quarter. Cleveland leads 7 0. Campbell again. 29 yard line. A quick seven. It's second and three. Clarence Scott, the strong safety, makes the tackle. He is healthy. He's well. He may get up very slowly, but when you give him that football, he really accelerates. He cut back on that play, and that's why he is so great, Charlie, from the eye formation. They give him that ball as deep as they possibly can in the backfield. And you let Earl Campbell find his own hole. Most of the time, if there isn't one, Campbell will find one anyway. He'll make one. You notice how Campbell always gets up. He is so slow. We asked Bum Phillips, how do you know if he's hurt? He said, if he goes to the huddle, he's okay. If he comes to the sideline, <laughs> then he's hurt. Good move. Good move inside. Good pick up the first down. Bradley and Alcedo were there. Listen to this crowd. They're going to see an excellent move because number 90 defensive end Harris is there and he's going to make the move right here. Let that tackler go on by and now he is so strong going straight ahead. You know he's going to pick up yards when he's hit. Look at the number of Browns around there to bring him down because one man is not going to bring him down. The Cleveland Browns defensive people, they know that. Number 77 on the sidelines, the rookie Angelo Field. Back up offensive tackle. It is a first down. Houston at their own 33. Rich Castor in motion. Tim Wilson. Wilson to the 38. A gain of five yards on the play. It'll be second down and five. So for the moment, at least, Stabler is content to stay on the ground. Well, I think particularly in this end of the field, they don't want to give up the football and put Cleveland in a position where they can score very quickly once again. He's got his two tight ends in the football game, both of them outstanding blockers. As a matter of fact, bringing in a third one in Castor is coming into the ball game, so they have three tight ends in the ball game to block. That's their game plan right now. Give the ball to the running backs, in particular to Earl Campbell. Second down and five. Wilson, the remaining back. He takes the pick and is wrapped up. Alzado makes the play as he cut off the flow. And then when he came inside, Marshall Harris was there. Yes, and also 57, Clay Matthews, the outside right linebacker, also got penetration upfield, turning that play back inside, enabling the pursuit to come along and make the tackle. Defensively, Elvis Franks comes in. Oliver Davis comes in, and Judson Flint comes in. Third down and six. They expect Stabler to pass this time. Ronnie Coleman is the remaining back. He's an excellent receiver. They got the blitz on. They got and he is down. First sack of the ball game for the Browns. They're 29th on the year. Marshall Harris. Gets the sack, his second of the season. They're coming after him. Matthews, 57, 50. Good is also in there. They're all over Kenny Saber. He had nowhere to go. When you get penetration up the middle, quarterback can't jump to up the middle and get around that uh, the wall coming from the outside. As a quarterback, you're aware of the amount of time you have to throw. Marshall Harris got to Stabler in two and a half seconds. And when you have a long way to go, that's not enough time to throw the ball. The only thing you can throw is a is a quick slant or a quick out, and that's my amount of time. Parsley's kick is high. It is short. Taken at the 35 by Dino Hall, and he is brought down by Jeff Rowe. Growth number 81, you may recall, fumbled the opening kickoff that Cleveland recovered and went into score. A 39-yard punt. We've got a timeout, and Cleveland has the lead. Teams are really going after it on special teams. 
Cleveland has the ball on their own 35-yard line. First down. Sipe to throw on first down. Has time. Fires incomplete. Reggie Rucker, the intended receiver at the 50-yard line. With the coverage was Greg Stimrick. It'll be second down and 10 for Brian Sipe. He has thrown only nine interceptions on the year. Charlie, you were mentioning time, but about Kenny Stabler, 2.5 seconds when he got sacked. That time, Brian Sipe really had a lot of time to get rid of the football, but it was just good coverage by uh, Stemrick of the Houston Oilers. Sipe also has the finest interception ratio in the NFL, 2.2. So he simply is not throwing the interception. That's the bottom line. Mike Pruitt. 39 yard line he picks up four it'll be third down and six is Ted Thompson and Daryl Hunt make the tackle for the Houston Oilers. Bum Phillips in his sixth year as the number one man of Houston. And notice he's indoors. He does not wear the cowboy hat indoors. But you can tell he's cowboy though. Isn't any question about that. Third and six so that means Calvin Hill comes into the offensive set. 21 receptions on the year, including three last week. Got both he and, uh, and Pruitt in the back of a great Pruitt. He's already he's caught 32 passes, so Sipe likes to go to his back. And Pruitt is cheated up just a little. Pruitt swings over the middle. The pass goes down the far side. It is intercepted by Mike Reinfeld. And there was not a receiver in the neighborhood. A flag, I believe, was also dropped. Weinfeld, his second interception of the year. Ryan Sipe threw this, and there was no one anywhere near wearing a white jersey for the Cleveland Browns. He must have anticipated his receiver going deep because no one is there, as you can see, except Reinfeld, number 37, the free safety of the Houston Oilers. And you saw the flag drop. We believe it is clipping. Calvin Hill. Calvin Hill was checking the linebacker first and then going uh, to the outside. He's being covered by Bingham, 54. But the ball is thrown uh, completely away from all of those people into the arms of Brian Phelps. Illegal use of hands, defense, on the return, first down. It's on the return, so it's still going to go back to the Houston Oilers. They're going to have the football, and that is the important thing for them. The Oilers have the ball at their own 37-yard line and a first down. Trailing in the ball game, 7-0. 4-32, time remaining first quarter. Pittsburgh has won today. So the winner of this game will be alone at the top of the Central Division. The loser will be tied with Pittsburgh only a game by play action. Wilson. Alzado catches him from behind. His momentum carries him for a couple of yards. Second and eight. Let's go to New York City and Bryant Gumbo. Cleveland is leading 7-0. The Oilers have the ball. Second and eight. They have not been out of there into the field. Play action. Stabler drops it. It is recovered by Cleveland. Number 90, Marshall Harris recovers the fumble. Second turnover in the ball game. First it was John Mooring, now it's Marshall Harris. There is really a mix up on the handoff here. Earl Campbell was supposed to get the ball and hit him on the side. It wasn't a real good clean handoff by Kenny Stabler. Harris coming in with another big break for the Cleveland Browns. Officially the ball at the Oilers 33 yard line where Cleveland has a first down. The other fumble recovery coming at the 19 yard line. And Brian Sipe capitalized in three plays with Cleo Miller going in to score. That last play, you could see that uh, Earl Campbell was not looking at the handoff. That's not his responsibility. It's the responsibility of the quarterback to get the ball in the stomach of the running back. Richie Rucker in motion. Second back through is Greg Pruitt. Pruitt has a yard on the play. Maybe a yard and a half. We'll call it second and nine. Greg Bingham makes the tackle. Yeah, Pruitt, uh, Pruitt this year, Greg Pruitt, he hasn't run the ball that frequently. Of course, he missed so much of the season because of an injury on that knee coming off of surgery from a year ago. But he has been very uh, helpful to the Cleveland offense in the pass, pass receiving department. 
A total of only 80 yards rushing coming into the game, but receiving 387 yards. Maybe he's more comfortable when he's outside until he's a little bit sure of the knee. You don't care how you get there, just so you get there. Dyke has pressure, steps away, he's stopped. Alvin Bethay got him. First sack of the ball game for Houston. And for Bethay, that is his first sack of the year. Well, he can thank number 50, Daryl Hunt, a linebacker. I had mentioned in the pregame show that in order for them to put pressure on Cleveland Browns and Sipe, the linebackers are going to have to blitz. And they have been doing that. That time, Daryl Hunt, 50, the linebacker, went across the top of him, but they came up with a sack. A loss of 10 will be third and 19. However, Sipe did have 4.1 seconds total time, but really only about 2.3 before Daryl Hunt was in the neighborhood. Cleo Miller is in the backfield. Five on the pattern. Mike Pruitt spins his way to around the 33-yard line. That is the original line of scrimmage. It will be fourth down as J.C. Wilson and Greg Bingham make the tackle. So it's going to be fourth down in the neighborhood of 10 yards. Then Don Cockroft comes onto the field. Field goal attempt upcoming. His longest this year is 45 yards. But he has made only one of his last five. And this is going to be from 50 yards away. Part of that could be that Logan, number 85, used to hold for Cockroft, but now a quarterback, Rookie McDonald, is holding for Cockroft. Remember, a quarterback is holding. Possible fake. 50 yard attempt. As the distance, it is no good. It is no good from 50 yards away. So the Oilers take over on downs with 2.23 left to go. First quarter, and Cleveland has the lead, as Cockroft is not that happy. I miss. We'll be back to the Astrodome in just a moment. And Houston escaped lightning with that fumble uh, recovery by Cleveland the last time. They didn't get any points. From the 33 to the 35, a gain of two for Earl Campbell, as Marshall Harris and Bradley and Lyle Alzado were all there. The defenses led by the linebackers, as you mentioned in the pregame show, dominating the game with the exception of one turnover that Cleveland capitalized on. You take a look at the linebacking core of the Cleveland Browns, particularly on first down. They're going to be up there real close to that line of scrimmage because they know they got to stop Earl Campbell. And one person is not going to do it. Campbell has been averaging over five yards a carry. He has 28 yards in seven carries, way under his average. Stabler throws interception. Ron Bolton has the interception. The Cleveland defense now with two fumble recoveries and an interception. Stabler did get some pressure, but this is a pass he should not have thrown. He's coming back. And taking a look at his delivery, he's throwing that thing almost side on. He was looking over for a curling pattern by his wide receiver. But he just kind of throws that ball up here, overshoots. Cash for number 87. Right into the arms of Ron Bolt, number 28, and another big break for the Cleveland Browns. This is the third, and it's still in the first quarter with 139 remaining. At the 27-yard line of Houston, Ed Fisher made the tackle. Stabler had 3.7 seconds to throw. For Bolton, that is his fourth interception on the year. Rucker in motion for the Browns. We played the first quarter at this end of the field. Greg Pruitt. Leans inside the 25. We'll give him three. Mark it second down and seven as Ken Kennard, the middle guard, was there to submarine. Now let's go to Bryant Gumbel in New York City for an update. Two sure. yard line, second and seven. One minute left to go, first quarter. Rucker again in motion. Sight to throw with five out. Good reception by Reggie Rucker at the 19 yard line as Mike Reinfeld was draped over him like a cape. A gain of five, it'll be third down and a pair. 
what they try to do with motion that time with the motion number 33 Reggie Rucker was lined up against Mike Reinfeld who is ordinarily a free safety and does not cover man to man at that time Ryan didn't waste a whole lot of time he stepped back there got set and fired that ball what they don't want to do is give up any yardage down here they want to at least get an opportunity for Cockrock to get three more on the board they're going to wait now to the, the end of the first quarter and they'll go down to the other end the reception by Reggie Rucker the first by a wide receiver today they're waiting only for the countdown to come to the end of the first quarter a quarter dominated by the Brown defense with two fumble recoveries and an interception they have the lead Cleveland seven Houston nothing we'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment Play action on third and two. Complete to the tight end, Ozzie Newsom. First down. 12-yard line. A gain of seven. Darrell Hunt with the tackle. Good call and a good play by the Cleveland Browns. That time they were faking to the back. They had Greg Pruitt, number 34, going deep. And the tight end, Ozzie Newsom, just hanging around there until the linebackers got out of the way. Sipe is going to dump it right off. Nobody around him. Nobody there. He knows he has the first down. Now he has to make sure he saves his head and doesn't get it torn off. And he wisely ducks under the tackle. First down and third down and two. Both ideal opportunities for play action passing. You saw how it worked right there. Houston 12-yard line. The Browns trying to stretch the lead. They are out in front. 7-0. Sipe. Out of the backfield is Greg Cross. And he has rolled out of bounds just inside the five. Ted Washington was there for the defense. Here we are, 34, Greg Pruitt. And he's going to get about a half a step on 59, Washington. The ball's got to go. It's got to get there before he gets to the sideline so he has an opportunity to turn up and get some extra yards. Good play by the Cleveland Browns. You're taking a look at ground level right now. 54 is Bingham. He really isn't going to be involved in the play. But Sipe gets the ball out in a hurry to Greg Pruitt. Gives him an opportunity to get a hold of the ball and turn up field. It'll be second down and three, just inside the five-yard line. Leo Miller in the backfield. Leo Miller to the two-yard line. He's in the neighborhood of the first down markers. Elvin Bethay is the man who stops him for the Oilers. 43 is Mike Pruitt, 30 is Cleo Miller. Now, he, the thing that they like about Miller is he does not fumble that football very often. And that is the tough yardage down there inside the five-yard line. The right has replaced him. And the touchdown that Miller scored his first of the year. The Browns now have McDonald Oden and Ozzie Newsom as the two tight ends. Well, I don't look for Charles White to do any blocking down here because he's not as large as Cleo Miller. I look for Pruitt to get the ball. So who do they give it to? Charles, Charles White. White, and he is dead. He may pick up a yard on the play as Robert Brazil was there to upend him. His momentum will carry him close to the one-yard line where it's second down and goal to go. This time, number 30, Cleo Miller coming back into the ball game with the play to Brian Sipe, the quarterback. Charles White coming out of the game. Taking a look right now, Sam Bertigliano, the head coach of the Cleveland Browns, along with Jimmy Schaffner, who is handling uh, the pass offense, and in particular, Brian Sipe, and he's done an amazing job with, with Sipe. Of course, Sipe does a lot on his own. Mike Stitzrude in for the defense. Miller in for the offense. Miller, his second touchdown of the game, Cleo Miller. And the Browns are out in front now, 13 to nothing. And remember, it was Ron Bolton's interception that set it up a 27-yard drive in seven plays. Here you're looking at it from the ground level down here. You see what it's like. You see the bodies flying around down there. Good blocking by the Cleveland Browns. Cleo Miller able to just walk into the end zone with the touchdown. You can see all the submarining going on by Houston. If you get outside, outside the containment outside, there's nobody left. It's an easy touchdown for the Cleveland Browns. Don Cockroft to attempt the point after. He has hit 31 of 36 this year. That's five misses. But this one is true to the mark. The score is Cleveland 14, 
and Houston nothing. We have 12 minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the first half at the Astrodome. A rise of 19 and 27 yards following a fumble recovery and the second one following Ron Bolton's interception. Nineteen yard line. It is Roaches on the return. Six yards to the twenty-five. Now you notice on the kickoff, the Browns will move everybody to one side or to the other. That is simply that just means they're going to kick that way. It does not mean it's an mean that it's an onside kick. Well, that's for sure. What they're going to kick it to one section of the field. And generally speaking, when you kick it to one corner, the return team automatically goes up that side because if they had to return to the other side of the field it would take too long to get over there and develop the uh, the wall Houston now trailing 14 to nothing from their own 25 yard line they have to get an offense generated and it has to be led by this man Earl Campbell now this Thursday 8 p.m. Eastern time is game people play with the final round of the DJ fast talk competition then some of America's strongest 11 years old 11 year olds test their stomach strength in the youth fitness pentathlon competition plus figure skating star Dorothy Hamill she will take a look at some future gold medalists in the girls figure skating competition all this and more this Thursday on game people play be sure to watch pass. second and five pass is complete to Wilson goes out of bounds Short of the first down, Ron Cruz, the rookie from Nevada, Las Vegas, was there for the defense. Ron Cruz displayed that he has some pretty good speed for a big man because he was chasing Wilson down all the way. He read screen, decided that that man was letting him in too easily after Stabler. And he knew something was up, even though he's a rookie. Third down and one. Houston has the ball at their own 34-yard line. The Brown defense has completely contained the Oiler offense. The three turnovers by uh, Houston has really hurt him so far in this ball game. It counts for all 14 points. Earl Campbell, Look first down. It. Campbell to the 50, to the 40, and caught from behind, tripped up at the 34-yard line. 31 yards, and Clay Matthews saved the touchdown. You want to know why defensive backs do not like to see this man in the secondary? Look at number 27, Tom Darden, coming up right now. An open field tackle. He just pushes him aside like he was hardly there. 57, Clay Matthews saves a touchdown for the Cleveland Browns. Nine carries, 64 yards total for Earl Campbell. 45, Wilson making a good block. Now it's uh, up to the defense to try to stop him. He just pushes right by Darden before 57, Matthews makes the stop. Cleveland 34, first and 10. Campbell again. Hit at the line of scrimmage by Henry Bradley. And he still picks up three yards on the plug. That shows you how strong that running back is. Number 34, Earl Campbell. I know people have heard it many, many times. That separates an ordinary back from a great one. He was nailed at the line of scrimmage by Bradley. Bradley's a big defensive lineman. He shook him off. He still picked up three yards. Any other back, he'd have been stopped at the line of scrimmage. Second down and seven. Mike Renfro goes wide to the far side. Two tight ends. Mike Barber and Dave Casper. Equal blocking. Three men outside of the center, left and right for Earl Campbell. Stabler to throw. Keeps both backs in. Renfro has it. Mike Renfro. Brought down by Ron Bolton at the 23. It'll be a first down. And the Cleveland Browns had pressure on Stabler that time. He just did get rid of the football before he's nailed. You can see Wilson, 45, is staying in to help block on the linebackers. A good pass by Stabler and a big first down for the Houston Oilers. And you know, of course, that Mike Renfro is the son of Ray, outstanding receiver for the Cleveland Browns, and he played with him. I know that very well because he's played with Cleveland and Young Mike used to be the ball boy hanging around here all the time in training camp. Stabler had three seconds to throw the last time. This pass is complete to Mike Barber. The tight end. Close to the first down as Clinton Burrell brings him down. 
These Houston fans have been waiting to cheer about something. Well, they have had something to cheer about in the last couple of plays. Mike Barber coming up with a reception. He's caught at least two passes in every game this season. And Charlie, I think it was last year when he was dissatisfied because he didn't feel the quarterbacks were throwing to him frequently enough. They're going to him this year, and he is producing very beautifully. And the chains are out for the measurement. Stabler has completed five of six for 26 yards. In reality, five of seven because the other one was intercepted by Ron Bolton. Six inches for the first down. Second down in six inches. Earl Campbell, or do you go play action and go for the touchdown? Earl Campbell, you, it is history, particularly last year. Uh, in short yardage situation with everybody punched up there. If he happens to get through that first wall, it's all over. And listen to the fans here in the Astrodome. First down, 11 yard line. Lyle Alzado was the first man there for the defense. Number 77, Lyle Alzado, the veteran of this, this line, and he is being blocked on by another veteran of many years, and that is Bob Young, who came over to the Oilers and really helped solidify that offensive line. Of, of Houston, and he is no youngster. He's 38, 38 years, years of age, old. and he's out there banging himself around at this kid's game. And a good move by Alzado, spinning off of the block, coming back in to make the tackle. 11-yard line. First down. Make of a reverse. Campbell. Close to the seven. It'll be second down and six. You think this game isn't tough and they aren't hitting out there. He was really nailed that time. Charlie Hall, number 59, was the first to get underneath him. He's going to fake the reverse because last week they did run the reverse to Renfro and he picked up 12 yards. This time they fake it. Keep the ball to Campbell. You see 59, Charlie Hall getting underneath right there. and Campbell is really nailed. Total offense, Houston now is 76 yards. Cleveland, 57. Oilers trying to piece together a 75-yard touchdown drive. Campbell to the outside. A stiff arm. Close to the two-yard line. Cleveland is saying there was a fumble at the end of the play. The Wait. officials are saying no. You take a look at this and see how hard a runner that 34 Earl Campbell is. You're going to see Tom Darden once again coming up, trying to make the tackle, doesn't make it. Burrell right there, and he just gets stuck with the headgear and knocks him completely off. Talk about a bull running with the football. Earl Campbell is exactly that. He has one thought, and that's getting into the end zone. And you see the ball bouncing loose, but he was down. Why well, I say when Cleveland knows it, you can't bring him down with one man making the tackle, particularly a defensive back. It's really a mismatch. Now we'll have the measurement. First and goal to go. One yard line. because Earl Campbell really ignites the excitement here. And what a ball carrier he is. That's why, what do you do if you're a defensive back trying to block or tackle this man in the open field? Virtually impossible to do with one man. Well, I know Stable is not going to keep the ball. <laughs> Campbell to the outside. He does not go in. Turned away at the mouth of the goal. Oilers have seven first downs. Cleveland has three. Cleveland has the lead, 14 to nothing. Robert L. Jackson. 
played his high school football at Smiley here in Houston, collegiate ball at Texas A&M, the man who was there. That time he was he was trapped back there for about a five-yard loss, and his ability to use the stiff arm got him back up by the goal line, so he didn't lose about five yards. Number 28, Ron Bolton, was there trying to make the tackle, but Campbell used the stiff arm and avoided him. The 11th play of the drive. Wilson, the lead blocker, Earl Campbell, the Donald, the I formation. And it is Campbell. Touchdown. French in the ball game to do the kicking last week. He was injured. He was unable to do the extra point. I think he only kicked one day this week. It is good. So the score is Cleveland 14 and Houston 7. Another one. They're almost being in a position for an onside kick rather than trying to kick it deep. And Cleveland has anticipated that. They are now putting their hands receiving team in with that thought in mind. The hands team meaning people who are accustomed to handling the football. I'm looking out there, looking at people like Calvin Hill is out there. Clarence Scott along the front line. Men from your defensive secondary, Charles White is there. Tony Fritz to kick off. Dino Hall is the deep back, but you figure that Fritz could go through the end zone if that's what he wants to do. He changes direction as a soccer kicker. He can go either way. It is an onside kick. And Cleveland recovers it. Fritz can kick off with either foot. Cleveland has the football. Now they've got this set up. Guido Merkis, number 19, one of them has to be the man to make the recover, but th they're not supposed to let the Browns catch the ball, but that was a good reception by the Cleveland Browns. Judson Flint is the man who took the kickoff, downs it at the 34-yard line, Cleveland in their own territory, first down. Very good move by Sam Ritigliano and the Cleveland Browns on that play, anticipating that. Now what Sipe doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to turn that ball over to Houston in a hurry because they've got momentum going right now. Leo Miller is in the backfield along with Mike Pruitt. And it's Mike Pruitt. 37-yard line. A gain of three, second down seven. Greg Bingham with the tackle, and look at this. Yes, sir. San Diego ahead of Philadelphia, 16 to nothing. Fouts has two touchdown passes in that ball game. Both of them to Kellen Winslow. Ralph Minerski also uh, has a field goal. One of the, the extra points uh, snaps was fumbled. Kellen Winslow, two touchdown receptions. For Dan Fouts in a very important ball game, particularly for San Diego. Second down and seven. Greg Pruitt, Mike Pruitt in the backfield. Rucker in motion. Sight to throw. Five on the paddle. Greg Pruitt, and he is brought down at the 36. Loss of a yard. Third down and eight. Greg Bingham, the right inside linebacker, makes the play for the Oilers. There was another linebacker involved in that play for Houston that really made Sipe get rid of that ball in a hurry. That was 52, Robert Brazil. He was blitzing on the play. He nailed Sipe just as he got rid of the football. As I said, the pregame show, what Houston has to do is put pressure on Sipe. Because they have a 3-4 defense, they're not going to do it with three men. The linebackers are going to have to be the ones to get in there and put pressure on site. That time, Brazil did. Third down and eight. 
Greg Pruitt and Calvin Hill are the setback. They are both excellent receivers, and Pruitt always seats up in this situation so he can get quickly to the left flat. He's the near back. A flag is down, and Seif is down. That would be the second sack if it stands up. They got to him in 3.9 seconds. And credit the secondary with great coverage. You see the pressure coming in, but they had their nickel defense in there or an additional back. Tatum was in the ball game. He can't find anybody. Nobody's open. And finally, the pocket collapses, and he's sacked. Putting him in a fourth down situation. They're going to have to punt the ball away, and I see a flag go down. I thought I saw a flag just go down in the middle of the... Holding number 68, offense, penalty decline, fourth down. Newsom should get excellent field position, Charlie, on this punt. Mike Stiffsrud and Jesse Baker got the sack. Evans will be kicking to Carl Roaches. 4.58, time remaining, second quarter. Cleveland leads by seven. High snap, but he gets it away. Good kick. Roaches at the 22, 25, 30. Lead forward to the 31. A 49-yard punt, an 8-yard return, and Judson Flint makes the tackle. And I'll tell you, I talked about the enthusiasm of both clubs. You can always tell it on the special teams. That time, the Browns were really flying downfield and made a good play. The Oilers with the ball. And we'd like to welcome those of you that have been watching the Buffalo Baltimore game. Here the score is Cleveland 14 and Houston 7. The Oilers have the ball. Just outside their own 31 yard line. Earl Campbell. Campbell is stopped at the 33. So add two more yards to his total. It'll be second and eight. Henry Bradley, the nose tackle, is the man that dropped it. That's a couple of real good plays that Bradley has made. If you take a look, Mike Barber, the tight end number 86 of Houston, is down on the play. They're employing two tight ends. 86 is Barber, the tight end. His job is to cut off Charlie Hall, the linebacker, 59. Make sure he doesn't get involved in the play. But what happens, you can see right now, Campbell nails him in the back, and you can see that his legs curl up on him, and that is not... Not a good sign. And the Derek Dowles of the Houston Oilers. Four minutes, 32 seconds left to go first half. Second down and eight. Defensive change, Elvis Franks is in a defensive end. Baker drops it off to Tim Wilson. Wilson goes for the first down. He needed eight yards and he got ten. The big men up front have to do the job. 74, Leon Gray, all pro. He's fighting against another all pro, number 77, Lyle Alzado. His job, keep him out of there, even if you have to grab his jersey and hold on to him, which is what Leon did that time. Sometimes you get away but with it. the one. yellow flag did not fall. Stabler now has completed six of eight, 37 yards. He has one interception. Ron Bolton and Clarence Scott made the last defensive play for the Cleveland Browns. First down, 43-yard line. Earl Campbell. There are seven finals already today. Lynn, let's run down the scoreboard. Some surprises, too. Pittsburgh stays in the hunt, defeating Miami 23-10. That's a final. Atlanta downing Washington 10-6 to stay on top in the West in the NFC. St. Louis defeating the Giants 23-7. Baltimore over Buffalo 28-24. That has to be considered an upset. Cincinnati defeating Kansas City 20 to 6. That also is considered an upset. Tampa Bay down in Green Bay 20 to 17. Second and five. Saber throws. Rich Caster. No, it's Mike Barber who's back in the ball game. Couldn't hang on to it. Barber left just a couple of plays ago. He has a hit pointer, as you mentioned. But now his job is to go down and find an open spot between the linebackers. The stop and he's sliding to the outside. It's a low pass, but one in which he should have caught. 
Third down and five. Mike Barber last week, 10 receptions, 97 yards, the most catches in one game in his career. That was against the Jets. Third and five. Saber far side. Going to Billy Johnson. They'll bring it back. Clinton Burrell was there for the defense. Number 84, Billy White Shoes Johnson running a sideline pass. And it's a good play by 49 Burrell because he's coming into the pitcher right now to get a hand on it. An excellent play by Burrell. Going to Billy Johnson. Brings up a fourth down situation for Houston. They're going to have to kick that football away with two minutes and 54 seconds remaining in this first half. The way the momentum has changed around in this second quarter from Cleveland to Houston, I'm sure Cleveland would like to get in at halftime with a seven-point lead. Dino Hall set for the return. Parsley catch. Fair catch. Taken at the 16-yard line. Two minutes and 47 seconds. That is the time remaining in the first half with the score Cleveland 14, Houston 7. We'll be back to the dome. The winner today will stand alone at the top. The loser will be tied with Pittsburgh in second place, but one game back. Sight to throw. All the time in the world and the under throw. Mike Brooks. It was good coverage of the secondary. He may just have been throwing it away. Good protection by the Cleveland Browns. They've done an excellent job. You're going to take a look at number 73, Doug Deacon, the left tackle, who's an outstanding pass blocker going against Elvin Bethay and he's got him in front of him he's got him in front of him to get him get to the side until way after the quarterback had an opportunity to get rid of the football but an excellent job by the left tackle of the Cleveland Browns Doug Deacon quarterbacks love to see tackles like that that can hold out that defensive end for four seconds Seif has completed six of ten for 38 yards Stabler six of ten for 37 Earl Campbell 17 carries, 88 yards rushing. Tight to throw. Pass is complete close to the first down. Going to number 80, that is Willis Adams, who played his collegiate ball here in the Dome at the University of Houston. Greg Bingham with the tackle. Well, that time they had about two seconds remaining on the 30-second clock before he got the playoff. He was directing Adams from one side to the other before he finally got him located where he wanted him to be. Came up with a big catch. The Oilers touchdown coming by Earl Campbell, his 10th of the year from a yard out. A 75-yard touchdown drive. And Campbell had the big play in the drive of 31 yards. That is Cleveland fourth. Fourth first down. First down. Pass is complete. Far side, Willis Adams. Adams, the number one draft choice a year ago. And now Cleveland stops the clock with a timeout. Cleveland's four losses this year. Seif has been held to an average of 194 yards passing. He has 61 passing at this point in the first half. In the Oilers' four losses, three of the four, Earl Campbell has been held to 60 yards or less. He already has 88. That is history. Cleveland has the ball and the lead at their own 42. First down. On the draw with a Greg Pruitt gets the call. Darrell Hunt makes the tackle. Gain of a couple of yards, but there was a marker on the play. Offside defense. Larry Cirillo, our producer, and Harry Coyle, our director, capturing that matchup between Leon Gray and Lyle Alzado, two all pros when the Oilers are in offense. In penalties, Houston three for 25, Cleveland three for 20. First and five. 2.02, time remaining. First half. Side play action, deep Logan, and he misses it. Good coverage by J.C. Wilson on Dave Logan, who has 42 receptions coming into this game. He had six in the game a week ago. Two-minute warning will be given to both benches. The Browns hold on to a seven-point lead, and they have the football. We'll be back in a moment. Cisco out in front of New England, 14-3 in the second quarter, and bear in mind, Buffalo lost to Baltimore. So it could be New England get back first place if they, if they win. Los Angeles ahead of the Jets, 17-6, second quarter. 
And here's a biggie. San Diego shutting out Philadelphia 16 to nothing, second quarter. And remember, San Diego and Oakland tied for the lead in the West coming into this weekend. Buffalo's record in the East is now nine and four. New England's record is eight and four. Second and five. Mike Croy. Maybe a yard, and that's about it. It'll be third down and four. Andy Doris, defensive left end, was there for the Houston Oilers. And so far, whenever Cleo Miller's been in the ball game, they have run with the football. They've taken out Mike Pruitt and Cleo Miller. They put in Greg Pruitt, the number 35, the uh, elder statesman of the Cleveland Browns, Calvin Hill. This is their territory. Third and about uh, four yards for the backs, both of them outstanding receivers. Third and four, Cleveland has converted only one of five. Third down opportunity. Flags are down, Oilers offside. Whistles down. There may have been a false start by the Brown, by a Brown offensive lineman. It'll be third down and nine. The call from the referee, Jerry Seaman. Time on the right side, 113. We're in the second quarter, Cleveland 14, Houston 7. Coming up next, at halftime, be sure to stay with us, NFL 80 with Brian Gumbel in Studio 6A in New York. Boy, Brian really gets his, he gets a workout on Sunday, particularly on our doubleheader day. Does an excellent job, third and nine. Screen, Calvin Hill. The blockers are way downfield. He will come up four yards, maybe five, short of the first down as Mike Stitzrud makes the tackle. Oilers had gone to four down linemen to put the pressure on. And Houston called timeout. You're going to take a look right now. This is screen pass, hoping to get the ball out to Calvin Hill with the blockers in front. Well, the ball is out to Calvin Hill, but you don't see any blockers. And you're not going to go very far without them. It's short. They're going to punt it away. Houston has called timeout. They want to score before this half is over. 101. That is the time remaining in the second quarter. It will be fourth down and a little over five to go for the first down. As Carl Roach is number 85, Jeff Gross number 81, and Tim Smith number 83 will all be back with Roach's the deep back, Bum Phillips, head coach of the Oilers. Their record is eight and four. Sam Reticliano, head coach of the Browns. Their record is eight and four something's got to give Evans will be kicking they've got a return set up they have three men back there to make sure that he gets an opportunity to field that kick and maybe at least get by the first man who's coming down the course here. no pressure look out the ball is down by Dino Hall of the Cleveland Browns, who is down very quickly. A punt of 39 yards. So Houston has a lot of artificial surface between the line of scrimmage, the 16, and the end zone. I said look out because what happened back there, a couple of Houston players were back there going to throw a block for the return man, and almost the ball almost hit them without them knowing it. If that had been the case, the ball had touched him, and Dino Hall downed it. It would have been the Cleveland Browns ball right there. Houston with one timeout remaining. Mike Renfro comes wide to the near side. Two tight ends in the set. Second back is Earl Campbell. Campbell almost makes the 20. It will be second down and set. That was a situation there, Charlie, that Stabler was looking if he happened to break Earl Campbell loose, then he'd have gone for some points. But now with 34 seconds and counting down, I'm sure they'll be content to run another play now and win at halftime, still seven points down in this ballgame. In fact, they will not have to run another play as the 30-second clock shows 25. The game clock shows 20 seconds, 15 and counting. That is the time remaining in the first half. And the people here are saying, hey, get a playoff, at least try for it, try to get some points on the board, but they're going to the locker room. 
So a defensive first half with the Browns capitalizing on two turnovers. Touchdown drive of 19 and 27 yards. The Oilers led by Earl Campbell moving 75 yards for their score. It is halftime. Cleveland 14 and Houston 7. Very interesting. Very interesting, Charlie. Oh. Cleveland Browns are number two in total offense, and look what they have done in total offense. Look at the, the passing yardage. 35 for Cleveland, 20 for Houston. The big story, though, is turnovers three by the Houston Oilers, all in the first quarter. If it hadn't been for that 75-yard touchdown drive by Houston, they'd really be in trouble. They wouldn't have any statistics up there. Tony Fritz to kick off with Charles White and Dino Hall set for the return. to the 20, slips the close line, and returns to about the 30-yard line where Cleveland will go to work. They will have Brian Scheib as their quarterback, the number one quarterback in the NFL, with Greg Pruitt and Mike Pruitt, the two running backs, Reggie Rucker and Dave Logan, the wide receivers. McDonald Odom is now the tight end with Deacon Shepard, DeLeon, DeLamalier, and Risen in that front line. It'll be Cleo Miller and Mike Pruitt to open the second half. Defensively, Andy Doris, Ken Kennard, Elvin Bethay, the front three. We'll check out the linebackers, Ted Washington, Daryl Hunt, Greg Bingham, Robert Brazil with Wilson, Perry, Reinfeldt, and Stimrick in the secondary. So the cast of players has been set as we open up the second half of the melodrama with Rucker in motion. Mike Croy. Four yards to the 34-yard line. It'll be second and six as Greg Bingham, the leading tackler for the Houston Oilers, is the man who brings him down. I think you get an idea of what they feel that they had to do as far as the Cleveland Browns are concerned coming out. I'm sure Sam Blair-Tigliano said, hey, look, let's go out and establish that line of assurance. We haven't done anything offensively, either running with the football or passing. If it hadn't been for the breaks that we had with turnovers, we would not be ahead. Second down and six. Browns from their own 34. We're 45 seconds into the second half. Rucker in motion. Cleo Miller. Miller breaks clean. He's open with a blocker with Logan in front of him. Battles his way inside the 20 to the 16-yard line. 46 yards for Cleo Miller who has scored the Cleveland Browns two touchdowns. Well, offensively rushing with the football, this man, number 30, Cleophis Miller, is the man who's gone for the Cleveland Browns. He jumps out, 85, Logan is out in front. Right now you see it, Logan does a good thing by not leaving his feet, just keep running. Running downfield, Cleo Miller picks up 46 yards on that play, and they're now down in scoring territory. Robert Brazil, Mike Reinfeld on the tackle. Stimrick was the man who just kind of held him up. Cleo's supposed to be a blocker. Uh, he's been doing a great job of running with the football in this ball game for Cleveland this afternoon. He comes out for a breather. Greg Pruitt comes in. First down at the Houston 16. Greg Pruitt sweep right side, and he runs out of room. He will go out at the 14. A gain of two, second down and eight. New York City. Here's Brian Gumbel. Thank you, Brian. And here are the Cleveland Browns moving from their own 30-yard line to the Houston 14 at second and eight. Cleo Miller, four carries, 60 yards. And as I mentioned, he has scored the two touchdowns for the Browns, his first two of the year. He's only rushed for 45 yards prior to this ball game, Charlie. This is a passing formation that Sipe is in. But he gives instead to Mike Pruitt. He goes to the 10, a gain of four, third down and four. At the top of the show, we talked about the Brown offense, almost one-dimensional. That is, coming into this game, 70% of their total yardage was passing. The key in this drive has been rushing. Yes, sir, and the touchdowns have been rushing. 35 yards passing the entire first half by Brian Seif, and that is way, way, way below what he is ordinarily accustomed to. Mike Pruitt is 31 yards in seven carries. And remember, Pittsburgh won. The winner of this game will be alone at the top of the Central Division. The loser will be tied with Pittsburgh, second place, but only a game back. Third and four. Five on the pattern. Pass is complete. It is complete to Greg Hood. He will not pick up the first down. Jack Tatum in the secondary. 
stopped his momentum. It will be fourth down, a yard, maybe a yard and a half, and Cockcroft will come in. 0 for 1 in the ballgame, missing from 50 yards out. That last play, Sipe was looking to throw it all the way. Pruitt was going down, trying to shake Tatum. But Tatum just stayed right there. He hooked in front of him. The ball got to him. It was short of the first down. Paul McDonald, the backup quarterback, the rookie from USC, is holding. Twenty-five yard attempt. And it is good. Cockcroft hits from 25 yards away. So it is Cleveland, 17. And Houston, 7. The margin is 10 points as Cockcroft splits the uprights here at the Astrodome. We'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. Taking a look at the ground level camera of Cockrock's field goal that is good and they called this at one time taking a look at the roof of the Astrodome the eighth wonder of the world and Charlie I played in here the first year that was built and that turf out there was not like the eighth wonder it was like <laughs> playing in the street they didn't have any padding under it it was terrible and now the Browns over shift left that only means they're going to kick that way where they'll have more tacklers it goes out of bounds and that's a quick five yards and they'll do it again from the 30 yard line now for Pittsburgh their opponents have won 61 percent they play here Thursday night and they have a travel day plus they're a game back regardless of who wins this afternoon and Pittsburgh defeating Miami earlier today 23 to 10 and now the kickoff from the 30 yard line it is way short. Taken at the 23. Cockcroft is not getting any depth on his kickoff. That's why they're angling it to one side and trying to kick it high to get the coverage down there. They put more men on that side of the field to get down under that ball in a hurry so that they don't get any return yardage. 17 yards on the return by Carl Roaches. So Houston has good field position, their own 37-yard line, and they have a first down. Opening drive of the second half. Browns move into field goal range. Cockcroft split the uprights 25 yards away. Stabler with Campbell and Wilson. Wilson the blocker and Campbell the ball carrier. Six yards to the 43. Second down and four. Two tight ends are Mike Barber and Dave Casper. With that offensive line of Leon Gray, Bob Young, Carl Mock, Ed Fisher, and Morris Town. These are the specific games remaining for the Oilers. They have two of them at home. We mentioned Pittsburgh Thursday night and Green Bay away, Minnesota at home. For the Browns, they go home for the Jets and finish on the road, Minnesota and Cincinnati. Second down and four, 43 yard line. Play pass. Deep it is caught to Dave Casper. Clarence Scott making the tackle, 27 yards on the play. 30-yard line of Cleveland. Play pass, Campbell faking, sidearm throw, a great catch. 22, Clarence Scott, the safety was coming in, almost had a shot of breaking it up or intercepting. You can see the Casper's being held up, but he's catching that ball between three defensive men of the Cleveland Browns. Concentrating on that football and coming up with really a big play, something that right now that Houston desperately needs. They need to move that ball and get some points on the board. They're 10 points down. Casper, his first reception of the game. This is the seventh game that he has played for Houston since coming in the trade with Oakland. Saber with all the time in the world. Casper. Casper to the Play action pass once again. Great pass to Casper. And watch the running ability he has. He gets hit and he's going to jump into the end zone. Last week he had to lead the ball game because of a concussion. He's in there right now, fighting his way through 57 Matthews to get free. He is free. Makes the catch. Jackson is following him. He's going to get nailed right here by Scott. 
but he doesn't wrap his arms around him. He spins into the end zone for a score. Two plays into the end zone. Both plays Stabler, who is now an old catching mate, Casper, Dave Casper. Tony Fritz with a point after. It is good. Cleveland 17, Houston 14. Take a timeout. We'll be back with a kickoff in the Astrodome. Well, you know, Stabler and Casper teamed up for many years with the with the Oakland Raiders. They're doing it once again here uh, with the Houston Oilers. So a great catch. The first one's really a great catch by Casper. The second one, a good catch and an excellent run to get into the end zone. Picked up at the five-yard line. Dino Hall. A mental mistake for the Cleveland Browns. They will have the ball at about the Cleveland 12-yard line. Edger Armstrong was down for the Houston Oilers. Cleveland, remember, still has the lead. It has been cut to three points. Cleveland better silence this crowd because a crowd with, with this much enthusiasm could do a great deal for a football team. And the only way to silence a crowd is to put points on the scoreboard. Nine minutes and 24 seconds. That is the time remaining. Third quarter. Cleveland from their 12-yard line with Mike Pruitt and Cleo Miller, the two running backs. Sight to throw. Five on the pattern. Scrambling. And then cut from behind. But he will pick up about three yards on the scramble as Robert Brazil brought him down at the 15. If only Sipe, that man right there, could have seen number 30, Cleo Miller. He was ahead by about two steps on a linebacker. And if he needed, here's Cleo Miller, number 30. It's scramble time now. Bing of 54 is guarding him all the way. There's nobody else around there. He's got about a five-yard lead. If Sipe had seen him and got him the ball, it would have been six points. Second and seven. It's going to be tough to hear down there. It'll be tough to check off because of all this noise. The wide receivers can't hear. Pass is completed the 30-yard line. Reggie. A gain of 15. Reggie Rucker, we had to wait because Wilson had tremendous coverage on him, and he still caught it. Two 33s around that football. Reggie Rucker coming up with the ball. Great timing by getting the ball to him, but Wilson, J.C. Wilson of Houston was all over it. First down, Cleveland, their own 30-yard line. Sight now has completed 10 of 15 for 78 yards. Mike Pruitt, Jerry, Greg Bingham making the tackle. And next Sunday, start your day with NFL 80. Your host, of course, Brian Gumbel. All of the latest news, scores, highlights, and more. And then regional football action. The Cleveland Browns against the New York Jets. Other regional games, including San Diego to Washington, Baltimore, Cincinnati, and Denver, Kansas City. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. A gain of five on the last play. It's second down five. Sight to throw. The quick out to Miller. He caught it at the 36-yard line and then was wrapped up by J.C. Wilson. They ran into a zone defense that time. Wilson was coming up to cover the short zone. He got the ball out to Cleo Miller, but he didn't have a chance because Wilson was all over him. A gain of a yard, third down and four. Greg Pruitt comes in. Miller comes out. I would assume he's going to throw, and I would figure his primary receiver would be Greg Pruitt out of the back. Well, Mike Pruitt also is an outstanding receiver. He's the leading receiver going into this game. He had 44 receptions, so he's got two excellent receivers in the backfield. Cleveland has converted one of seven third down opportunities. This is third and four. Right in chase. Incomplete at the 40 yard line. Trying to help 
throws him out. He had only 2.9 seconds to throw it. We had said prior to the ball game the way to, to handle a pass offense is to put pressure on the quarterback. 33 is J.C. Wilson. 85 of the Browns is Logan. He's coming back for the ball, which is an excellent move by a receiver. Come back after it. Make a move. But the ball was thrown too low, and the reason was Sight was under tremendous pressure. Johnny Evans to catch. Carl Rocher at the 24-yard line of Houston. He needs about a 15-yard return for the Oilers at field position. 6-12, time remaining. Third quarter. Good catch. Taken at the 21-yard line. Excellent coverage by the Cleveland Browns. A kick of 33 yards. The return just over five. And again, it was Judson Flynn who was there. We'll mark it officially the 30-yard line. When we come back, the Oilers will be on offense. They trail by three. 13, 14. Oilers have the ball on their own 30-yard line. The first back is Tim Wilson. He'll pick up a yard on the play. It'll be second down and nine. Dick Ambrose, the right inside linebacker for the Cleveland Browns, was the first man there for the defense. Ordinarily, he pitches that ball out to Earl Campbell, but that time he faked the pitch out and gave it to the first man going through, Wilson, hoping to trap the defensive end, but that time Cleveland played it very well. Second and nine as Mike Renfro comes wide to the near side. the ball will give him a yard it'll be third down and eight Charlie Hall was there was he ever there 59 Charlie Hall made a great stop I said earlier that it's very difficult to bring down early Earl Campbell on your own one-on-one -on -one. but that time Charlie Hall number 59 the left outside linebacker the Cleveland Browns did it Cleveland overall has done an outstanding job defensively I know they did have one big drive in the first half to score a 75-yard drive. And then Dave Casper here the last time they had the football for Houston got into the act. But overall, Cleveland's played well defensively. The Browns now with six men in the secondary. Oilers have converted two of five. Third down, Saber has time fires. It is complete. Mike Barber has the first down. Casper with a Barber with the reception and Stabler going again to his tight end. Well, go to somebody you're familiar with, and that's 80, 86. It was Barber the tight end? He's all over him. Burrell, 49, is all over him. Makes a dive for them, tries to get the ball, knock it down. He doesn't get it. And a good move by Barber. He moved away from that defensive man to the open spot. Stabler with his pinpoint passing that time got the ball to him. A gain of 10 in the first down. Stabler. 40% of his completions on the year. 40% have gone through his tight end. Houston at their own 42. Play action. Incomplete. Intended receiver Mike Barber slips and he was rolling over backwards and still trying to bring it down. Play action pass that time once again. It's a good play on first down because of the great running ability of Campbell. 86. Barber going out, and he's going to be just doing a turn in, looking, and he really isn't the primary receiver. And he says, whoops, he's looking at me. He tries to make a move. His feet get caught in that synthetic turf, and he goes down. And they're fortunate that it was not intercepted by the Cleveland Browns. Second down and 10. 3.46 left to go, third quarter. Cleveland leads by three. Screen. For Earl Campbell, that is only the 10th reception of the year. Check the scoreboard. Final score, Pittsburgh defeating Miami 23 to 10. Atlanta downing Washington 10 to 6. St. Louis over the Giants 23 to 7. Baltimore down Buffalo 28-24. Cincinnati upset Kansas City 20 to 6. Tampa Bay edged Green Bay 20 to 17. And Minnesota finally edged New Orleans, 23 to nothing. New Orleans yet to win. San Francisco leading New England 21-3. That's in the third period. 
quick correction, it was 23-20 on the New Orleans goal. They're nothing means they haven't won. The flag is down. Sabres have intercepted incomplete. 27, Tom Darden had the ball, did not have control of it. When he hit the ground, it bounded loose. And as we pointed out, with the snap of the ball, a flag was dropped. That would have been a great interception for Tom Darden. He left his feet. He dove after it. He got his hands on it. But as you said, as he hit the ground, and it wouldn't have made any difference, would it? The crowd will tell you that Cleveland was offside. They'll move it out to the 49. It will be third down and three. Okay, they got that's a play. The play is on it looks like the wrist. That's a Polaroid. No, it's a, oh, it's a Polaroid. It's a picture. They take a picture up above to show what happened. A sequence of pictures, Polaroid cameras, and then they send it on down to the coaching staff on the sideline to see exactly what happens at the snap of the ball and how they are lining up defensively. And, and where that defense makes their first step. What direction they were going. Third down and three. Campbell. It'll be close. He may have it. Charlie, I thought looking at it, it used to be the quarterbacks. They put the plays on the wrist. And it got embarrassing out there. You're a quarterback. You have to look at your wrist. I think you to see what time it was when they get out of there. One fourth down and a couple of feet. I said earlier that the thing to do is give that ball to Campbell. He is now over 100 yards. Everybody's bashed up there. Everybody knows who's going to get the ball. 87 Casper. He made some great catches. There's a great block. Really drills Clay Matthews out of the way. Look at the block by 87 Casper. Can't ask for any more than that from a tight end. That put Earl Campbell over 100 yards. 22 carries. 105 yards this afternoon. And Tom Darden saves the score with a tackle. 43 yard line of the Browns. Campbell inside the 40. They'll mark at the 40. It'll be second down and seven. As Marshall Harris, the defensive left end, is the man who brought him down. I had mentioned earlier, <coughs> a little while ago, when Cashman made a couple of catches, he was rather questionable for this ball game because of the concussion that he received in the ball game last week against the New York Jets. But he looked like he was all right right now, Charlie. He made two great catches, and that was an outstanding block on an out on a really a fine linebacker. Second down and seven. Cleveland forty. One minute left to go, third quarter. With pressure, going deep. Incomplete. Mike Renfro went high for it, could not pull it down, and Ron Bolton had the coverage. And Stabler had all kinds of pressure from the Browns. He was going up top. He had man-to-man -to -man coverage, Renfro on Bolton, and it was very, very close. Renfro has made some outstanding catches so far this year for the, the Houston Oilers. It seems as though if they get the ball anywhere where he can get his hands on it, he comes up with it. Third down and seven. Renfro to the far side, Billy Johnson to the near side. Here they come. The blitz is on. Pass is complete to Dave Casper. A gain of just a couple. It'll still be five yards to go. He had three seconds to throw. But he was backing up on that third second of that third count because they are coming after him. Here it is. 12 is Kenny Staber. And you can see they're going to put the heat on him. The back, Wilson stays in the block, but he's falling back, getting rid of the ball he has to or else he's in deep trouble because number 90 defensive end Harris was about to level him. Fourth and five, Parsley is in the kick. Dino Hall set for a return. Ten seconds and counting, time remaining, third quarter. Going for the corner. Out of bounds. 
at the 15-yard line, a kick of 23 yards, and the third quarter comes to a close. At the end of three, it is Cleveland 17, Houston 14. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Cleveland taking over now. Sipe is 11 for 17 for just 79 yards, one interception. So it's not a typical Sipe afternoon, but he's got one quarter to go. Mike Proy. He will pick up six yards to the 21. It'll be second down four as Greg Bingham makes the tackle. Cleo Miller, the blocking back, number 30. Number 30 does an excellent job of blocking. Primarily, that's what he's going into the games for, and he gets through the hole. He didn't do anything, Charlie. He didn't knock anybody out. But the back is following him, so if Cleo gets through the hole, then the running back should get through the hole also, and he picked up some good yardage. Well, Cleo has been uh, a big man running with it. 60 yards and two touchdowns for number 30, Cleo Miller, this afternoon. Second and four. Mike Pruitt gets around the corner and out of bounds, close to the first down, but he will be a yard and a half short as Mike Reinfeldt and Greg Bingham bump him out of bounds. Number 54 out of Purdue University, Greg Bingham, the leading tackler on this Houston football team. He's free. Nobody got to him. You can see the guard is trying to get after him, but it doesn't get to him. He barely gets a hand on Pruitt. With some help from Reinfeldt, they knock him out of bounds. One of the big keys on that, you didn't see it, but Cleo Miller made a good block on the linebacker that enabled Pruitt to get outside. Mike Pruitt is 44 yards rushing. Miller has 60. That's 104. Earl Campbell alone has 108. Gives you an idea. Third and two. Pruitt goes over the top. Mike Pruitt will pick up the first down to the 26-yard line, first and 10. Well, that was strong running by Mike Pruitt, number 43. There wasn't much there, but that strong leg drive got him through and got them the first down. And the first down that they need, 354 or 1354, and counting down in this fourth quarter. Looks like that uh, with Houston, Casper and Sabler teaming up, and with Earl Campbell in there, they're able to strike from any place. First down, and the Browns go with three wide receivers Dave Logan. Ricky Feature and Reggie Rucker. No tight end and two running backs, Mike Pruitt and Cleo Miller. Cleo Miller, 33-yard line. A gain of seven, second down, and three as Bethay and Reinfeldt stop him. And this means now that Sipe has the upper hand. He can either run or throw. He's in a good position right now in play calling to come up and call a run or a pass or a play pass. And with the way that those backs are running as strongly as Miller and Mike Pruitt are running, would never be afraid to give either one of them the football. Official spotted it to 32, so it is second down and four. They stay on the ground. Mike Pruitt leans across the 35. Does not pick up the first down. Robert Brazil and Mike Reinfeldt with the tackle. It'll be third down and a yard. Now for an update. Let's go to New York City and Bryant Gumbel. All right, thank you, Bryant. Cleveland has converted only two of nine third down opportunities. Third and one. down if the play stands it will still be close but there's markers to concern ourselves with Defense. I wonder First. if the Browns are operating uh, without a tight end because Newsom is hurt he's been bothered with an ankle injury that's your friendly photographer on the <laughs> sideline how do you know she's friendly, Charlie? Because ah, she's a friend of yours, that's why. From their own 40-yard line, five on the play for Cleo Miller. It'll be second down and five as Brazil makes the tackle. 
getting away from uh, what they generally do. I'm talking about the Cleveland Browns. You've mentioned a couple of times that 70% of their offense is through the air. They've been successful today because of their running game. And a lot has to do with number 30, Cleo Miller, not only running but blocking for Mike Pruitt. Has the defense of the Oilers dictated that they must run? I don't think so. Uh, although the defensive secondary really has done an outstanding job of covering the receivers of the Cleveland Browns. Second and five. Again, Cleveland with three wide receivers. Mike Pruitt. He'll lose a yard. Cut down by Robert Brazil and Greg Stimmerich. It'll be third down and six. Really a great play by 52 Robert Brazil, the all-pro right linebacker of the Houston Oilers. Cleo Miller was trying to block him, but he was not going to have anything of that. He threw off Cleo Miller on that particular play and made the tackle. Third now, down the, and set. Now what the situation is for Sipe, more than likely he's got to go to the air. He has Dave Logan, Ricky Feature back in, and Reggie Rucker as the three wide receivers. He does not have a tight end. They didn't bring in Greg Pruitt or Calvin Hill, though. He has Mike Pruitt and Cleo Miller. They could well stay to block for him. Five on the pattern. Takes off the tackle, gets a block. Still scrambling. Throw! It is juggled incomplete. And Sykes was scrambling all over the Astrodome. He had 10 seconds before he threw the ball. Yes, but he is breathing hard on about eight seconds because he was avoiding the big rush of Houston. Here it is. He's fading to the right. He's going to escape number 75 of the... Uh, Jesse Baker. Jesse Baker, who's leading their sacking for Houston, gets rid of the football. It was a high throw. Would have been a rather tough catch. See, that ball should have been thrown low. The receiver could have come back and made a catch. Would have been a lot easier to make the catch. Johnny Evans kicking. Not a good kick. Wow. It is down in the neighborhood of the 27 or the 28-yard line, a punt of only 33 yards. The Oilers have the ball. They trail by three. Ten minutes to go. Houston 14. The Oilers from their own 28-yard line. Renfro in motion. Earl Campbell. Lyle Alzado captured him at the 28-yard line, the line of scrimmage. He still managed to pick up two to the 30. It'll be second down and eight. Looked like Lyle Alzado was doing one of those steer uh, roping or grabbing the steer, steer wrestling, wrestling yes. because that's what he did. And Lyle's a big man. He grabbed a hold of Campbell and just held on. Take a look now. That's Tim Wilson, 45. The fullback of Houston is down. And fans are on hand. They call the Browns the cardiac hit. The Oilers now with Campbell, the remaining back. Two tight ends and two wide receivers. Now three tight ends. Casper is there as a flanker. Incomplete at the 42-yard line. Going to Rich Casper, but he was out of bounds. Time to throw was 4.1 seconds. Good protection. We've got a stopwatch on both quarterbacks. That's the reason we can give you the time. They're bringing it. They're saying it's good. I thought the call was that he didn't have it in bounds. Well, here's Stabler going back. He is. The vision is good, which is the most important thing. He's able to take a look at the defense and also his receivers to see where they're going. 88 is, is Caster. He's a tight end, but he's also a wide receiver. He has that capability. Makes the catch. Can't really see whether he's in or out. They say he's in. It's a first down for Houston, and now it's first for 10. And Tim Wilson is back in the lineup for the Oilers. Plenty of time again. First down. Dave Casper, 38 yard line, still battling inside the 35 to the 34. 23 yards before Dick Ambrose finally brings him down. This is the crowd. He must be watching Earl Campbell because watch the effort of Casper, number 87 after he makes the reception. He's really nailed by Burrell. He still isn't going down. 
for finally it was Dick Ambrose, 52, the linebacker, that did bring him down. But they're moving down in good field position. At the 34-yard line. First down. Earl Campbell. A flag is down a couple of yards. Yards on Houston. Let's listen. Holding number 45. Offense. It's on Tim Wilson. So bring it out to the 44-yard line. It will be first and 20. Really been impressed with Dave Casper this afternoon. They didn't do much with him in the first half at all. All of a sudden, he's exploded, making great catches, and that run was really great. But he's going to have to do it again. Campbell, he's going to throw the opposite pass, but he keeps it. I only mention that because he swept to the right and took a moment. Let's take a moment and go to Bryant Gump. The ball, Cleveland 43, but they face a second and 19 as Earl Campbell comes out. Remaining back is Tim Wilson. He's primarily in there to help block the Stabler. Stabler's pass is incomplete. There's a flag. He was going to Dave Casper, and Casper had drawn a crowd. Both 57 Clay Matthews, 52 Dick Ambrose. They, both of them, they were around Casper when the flag flew. Interference, number 57, defense. On Clay First Matthews. At the 29-yard line of the Browns. A big break for the Oilers at the 744 mark. Really a big break oh, for them yeah. because they're in scoring position right now. They get another first down. They're in scoring real good scoring position. It would have been third and 19 back at the 43. It's first and 10 at the 29. Alzado was off. Reverse. Side. Reverse to Winfro. Took the tackle. Around the corner. And then out of bounds. But a flag is dropped on each side of the field. I believe it was Lyle Alzado, the defensive right end, who was in the neutral zone. He may have been drawn off. We'll wait and see. Offside, number 77, defense. Well, you're right, Charlie. Of all times, he shouldn't have jumped offside to get that big jump because... He was chasing the play and chased himself right out of the reverse. First and five. 24-yard line of the Browns. Campbell. One yard to the 23. Second down and four. Marshall Harris, defensive end and nose tackle Henry Bradley. Make the stop for the Browns. Marshall Harris, number 90, the defensive left end of the Cleveland. I can recall three or four real good plays that he's come up with defensively for the Cleveland Browns and stopping Earl Campbell this afternoon. And Campbell, as you saw, a total of 112 yards rushing. Second Marshall. and four. Seven minutes left to go. Marshall Harris was drafted by the Jets. And when he went there, he, Gastineau was there, and Lyons was there, so he decided to leave. Earl Campbell. No gain. He'll lose a yard, maybe two. Clinton Burrell, the cornerback on the right side defensively, came up to make the play. I'll tell you, the linebackers of the Cleveland Browns are moving, and they are hitting. Clay Matthews, 57, number 52. Dick Ambrose, they're swimming. They know they have to. If you're going to play against the Houston Oilers and Earl Campbell, you better be very, very aggressive and go after him and hit him because one man generally is not going to bring Earl Campbell down. Loss of two, third down and six. With Tony French loosening up on the sideline. Bear in mind that he pulled a muscle, was unable to kick last week. Stabler to throw. Has a blitz. He'll go down. He'll take him out of range. He completes the pass at the 21-yard line. It is not a first down, but Dave Casper with the reception keeps the Oilers within field goal range. That was a great play by Stabler. It looked like he was nailed back there. Going back to throw, 57 Clay Matthews first. He gets rid of the ball right here. Three Browns around him. Number 74, Leon Gray came back and made a good block that helped.
Stabler get rid of that football, and he's going to go to his favorite receiver, one he knows so well from Oakland, but now Houston, is Dave Caster. And Tony Fritz comes in as they go for the top. From the 28-yard line with Gifford Nielsen holding. An attempt of 38 yards. Does not make it. Way short from 38 yards away. And remember what Lynn Dawson said a moment ago. Fritz with a muscle pull last week did not play against the Jets. Did not kick this week until Friday. And they said it was all right. We'll be back in a moment with more action on the field goal attempt. Absolutely no follow through. Watch this follow through or lack of it. The leg is going to stop right there. In kicking the ball, you should extend that foot through the middle of the uprights. Perhaps that leg really is bothering Tony Fritz. Because he had no, it had no chance whatsoever. Just punching at it rather than a sweep through. It just hooked. It's like if you're a golfer and you stop swinging. Cleveland has the ball from their own 21-yard line. 4.57 is the time remaining. And Seif is going to put it up. Deep. He goes deep into coverage. Flag is dropped. No, that was a cap that was dropped. It could be that he's been out of, out of bounds. Charlie could have been. He was pushed out of bounds. He's running out of bounds. Had he caught it, it wouldn't have been any good anyway. Or maybe Rick the official was just running so fast that he thought he was Willie Mays and the hat came off. Ricky Feature, the intended receiver. Ken Kennard is the oiler who is injured. We've got a timeout. Brian Seif has now completed 12 of 19 for only 83 yards. Come out of the game. Appears to be all right. Elvin Bethay will move over to the middle guard position. Jesse Baker will be the defensive right end. Mike Smith through the defensive left end. Yep. Brian Seif has thrown a touchdown pass in every game this season, except today, so far. Mike Pruitt. That was second and 10. This will go to the 24. It'll be third down and seven. 53 was in that ball game. You know who 53 in your program is for Houston Oilers? It's Hollywood Henderson. Thomas Hollywood Henderson, as you know, with Dallas and San Francisco, came to Houston. He's been out with a hamstring since the Kansas City game seven weeks ago, activated this week. Third down and seven. Greg Pruitt and Mike Pruitt. Kennard back in on defense. Cleveland has converted only two of nine. is down. An oiler may have been in the neutral zone. Pass was knocked away. Vernon Perry with a defensive play, but an oiler lineman was moving if he was in the neutral zone. It would go over and be third down and two. Offside defense. It'll be third down and two at the Cleveland 29 yard line. So a reprieve for the Browns who lead 17-14 with now three minutes and 59 seconds left. They need to move that football. They need a first down very badly with 3.59 remaining in this game. Eight seconds on the 30-second clock in county. You can see in the background. Mike Pruitt, they stand him up. Pruitt now 15 carries. 51 yards. He does not pick up the first down. The Oilers will have another opportunity as Elvin Bethea and Robert Brazil make the tackle. You talk about coming to an abrupt stop. You're going to take a look at it right now. Pruitt coming in there. Bethea is 65, 52 is Robert Brazil. And they've got a hold of him, and that's as far as he goes. Vernon Perry, 33, and Ryan Feld, the safeties come up to push him back. Evans to, to kick to Carl Roaches. 3.35 and counting. Time remaining. Good kick. Field it at the 21-yard line. About five yards on the return, and that is all. A punt of 48 yards. We've got a timeout with 3.23 remaining. 
Houston has the football. They trail by three. Thank you, Brian. And here in Houston, the Oilers have the ball. But the Cleveland Browns have the lead. They have led throughout the game. The Oilers have been playing catch-up, and they haven't caught them. Houston for their own 27-yard line. First down. Campbell, the remaining back. Stabler's pass. Lynn Crow, did he catch yes, it? Yes, 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 they said. On a comeback dive in front of the Cleveland bench at the 41-yard line. 14 yards in the first down. I had mentioned earlier that Renfro of late has been catching anything that he can get his hands on, and you're going to see once again what I'm talking about. Look at this effort by Mike Renfro. Cradles that ball and gets out of bounds. And you may recall that Mike Renfro was part of that very controversial situation with Pittsburgh. Not to bring up any sore things. The controversial play. Far side. Did he catch that? Hey, Castro, he reached behind him. Could not pull this one in. I thought he's throwing the football away. It looks like 87 Dave Casper almost came up with another great catch. He's just an outlet. The ball is on its way. He almost had it, but when he turned, it bounced well, off I'll of the I'll tell you, he has been something Ooh. this afternoon. Sabler now 15 of 22 for 156 yards. Second and 10, Houston. Their own 41-yard line, 226. Time remains. Just another day's work for the snake. He's not in most yeah. He's got pressure. Hey, Casper, then he fumbles it. It is picked up by Judson Flynn. The Browns have the football. Judson Flynn alertly picking up the fumble recovery. You look. Listen to this crowd now. All of a sudden, nothing here. But that was really a great play by the Cleveland Browns. Casper coming out. Excellent throw by Stabler right on the money. Now he's going to get nailed. Darden is the man that hits him. You're going to see a block coming up here by Franks, 94, I think, right there oh. on Wilson, the fullback. He really nailed it. Fourth turnover in the ball game by the Oilers. Three fumble recoveries and an interception by the Browns. Take a look at Stabler now. An excellent throw. Catches his man Casper right on the numbers. Barton knocks it loose. Brown's picking it up right here. 94. Watch his shot. Oh, that hurt just watching. But for the Browns, 216 remaining in this football game. It has not been the offense of the Cleveland Browns this afternoon. It has been the defense that's done the job. Number 20, Judson Flynn from Memphis State. The turnovers tell the story. McDonald Oden is in as a tight end. Cleveland's ball, they're on 43. Cleo Miller. Cleo will lose a couple of yards. He is met by Ted Washington. Well, the intensity of this game has been the same from the opening kickoff to right now. It's been really heavy. They've really been banging out there. 2 11 remaining. Houston calling it the greatest quarterback next to Lynn Dawson <laughs> against the clock, and that would be the snake, Kenny Stabler. The snake he wants another chance. He had him going that time, except for the fumble by Casper. He had him on the move once again. Second and 12. Type has pressure. Throw. Rucker, a great catch. A yard shy of the first down as Reggie Rucker pulls it down and Mike Reinfeldt pulls him down as we move to the two-minute mark. This so is a great clutch catch by number 33, Reggie Rucker. Take a look. And with that reception, we'll take a timeout. Two minutes to go. The Oilers have two timeouts. And there's the man that wants the football back, the snake. He's not too concerned about it. His composure is always there. He knows he's got a job to do, but he can't do his job until his teammates get the football back for him. 
this is the play. Two timeouts remaining for Houston. If Cleveland gets the first down, that means that Houston's going to have to utilize their two timeouts, and Cleveland can help run out the clock. For Houston, they must stop Cleveland right now from picking up the first down. Third and two at the Houston 49. A trip to the Super Bowl could ride on this play. Mike Pruitt. No, sir. The Oilers stop him. Timeout is called. to get the numbers out of the way and back to the game. 154 left to go as Johnny Evans will be kicking to Carl Rocha. And he wants to get an excellent kickoff right now. He does not want any return by Roaches of Houston to put them in any type of field goal position. Right now, Houston has one timeout remaining. Number 16 is Tony Fred. Yes, he missed a field goal attempt that would have tied the game here a little while ago. I'm sure he's hoping to redeem himself. He missed that one from 38 yards away. So in the last three games, he has missed twice from 29 yards today from 38. Here's the kick. It's a good one. It hangs up. Roaches takes it at the six-yard line. Roaches to the 10. Roaches to the 15. To the 22-yard line. A punt of 44 yards. A return of 16. One minute and 40 seconds. Time remaining. Clock is stopped with a change of possession. Houston has the ball. Their last opportunity. The snake is in. Casper has been his man in the second half, number 87, that he's gone to. He's gone to uh, his tight ends primarily in this football game. 140 left. He's done it many, many times. And as you can see, he's not too concerned. He knows what he has to do. But the offensive line is going to have to give him protection. As pressure going, it is Casper. It is Casper. Listen to the crowd. 35-yard line of Cleveland. Terrell with the tackle. for 152 yards. Now we've got a timeout. The Oilers call it. 132 left to go. Houston does not have a timeout remaining. Incomplete. Number 22, Clarence Scott, come up with a good play that time, diving in there, knocking that ball down. Almost had an interception. So it's second down and 10 at the Cleveland 35. Dave Casper coming back into the lineup as Rich Castor comes out. Stabler now 17 of 24 for 217 yards and an interception. Elvis Franks, number 94 of the Browns, back in the lineup, hoping to put some pressure on number 12, Kenny Stabler. Second and 10, Cleveland 35. 127 left to go. Stabler with lots of time. Interception, Scott! Browns have it clear up, Scott, with the interception. Fifth turnover by the Oilers. It has been the Cleveland Brown defense that once again rescues the cardiac kid. Two plays in a row by number 22, Clarence Scotty. Knocked one down. That time he read it beautifully. Stabler had a lot of time to throw. The protection is excellent. The coverage is great. Look at uh, Casper's being handled over there by 57, Matthews. Scott watching all the way. They had three men, four men around Casper looking for him. The big, big play of the afternoon for the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> at the 33-yard line, Cleveland has the ball. 117, clock is stopped with the change of possession. The Oilers do not have a timeout remaining. 
all that the Browns have to do is fall on the football. Their record will be nine and four. They will be alone at the top of the Central Division. Houston and Pittsburgh, they will have eight five records. They will be a game back. They will play here on Thursday night. All right, we want to welcome those of you watching the San Francisco New England game. And here it is Brian Seitz just running out the clock. The Oilers cannot do anything about it. And a big victory for the San Francisco 49ers over New England. New England with a victory would have tied Buffalo because Baltimore defeated Buffalo this afternoon. So Buffalo gets some help from San Francisco. They're still on top in the AFC East. Right here at the Astrodome in Houston, it's been a defensive battle by both clubs. The Cleveland Browns defensive unit coming up with five big turnovers, and that has been the name of the game because the offense of Cleveland really has not done very much this afternoon. This Thursday, Houston hosts Pittsburgh. On Sunday, Cleveland is home to host the Jets. Right, falling on the ball again. The big event, King Kong, will be seen immediately following the conclusion of this game, except over most mountain and Pacific time zone stations, where it will be seen at its regular time. And now the game is over. Ten seconds and counting. The Oilers cannot stop it. And so everybody decides to head for the locker room. Big win for the Cleveland Browns. Tony Fritz had an opportunity, 38-yard field goal attempt that was not good. They could have tied this ball game up a little while ago. But the turnovers, Casper made a fine catch. He was stripped of the football. Cleveland came up with it when Houston was on the march. Once again, Houston on the march once uh, this last time. And Clarence Scott, strong safety, came up with a big, big interception for Cleveland. Final score, Cleveland 17 and Houston 14. Don't forget, immediately following these local messages, be sure to stay tuned for the big event. King Kong over most of these stations, except for most mountain and Pacific time zone stations, where it will be seen at its regular time. Cleveland is atop the Central Division with a win today. So long, everybody.